Today we're analyzing this truss, and almost everything about this truss is pretty standard. There's no tricks or catches here. But I see people get tripped up at one point on this truss, and it has to do with this beam right here. So just like any other truss, we're going to solve for the reaction forces, the force in each beam, and figure out whether each beam is in tension or compression. And since this beam is typically where people get stuck, we're going to go through and work out all the easier calculations within this truss in order to help us out as much as possible in working out the force in this top beam. Now starting with the reaction forces by the supports, this truss is symmetric from left to right. And what that means is the downward force by the load is going to be counteracted by the two supports evenly, meaning there's half the load on each support. And knowing the forces by each of the supports, we can now apply the method of joints to this truss in order to solve for the forces in each joint. So starting over here at A, you see there's two paramount rules of truss analysis that we have to keep in mind here. The net force on any joint in any axis always has to add up to zero, and beams can only act along their axis. So keeping those two rules in mind, let's look at what's going on here at joint A. We know the force by this pin is pushing up with a force that's half the load. So load being 1, we get an upward force by the support of 0.5. Now because a beam can only act along its axis, or in the direction of the beam, that means this beam running from A to D cannot act vertically on this joint, which really means that this beam AB has to be pushing down on joint A just as hard as the pin support is pushing up. What that means is the vertical component of the force in AB has to equal 0.5. Now I say that force is a component because remember, a beam can only act along its axis. Truly what beam AB is doing is pushing down and to the left so that its vertical component is 0.5. Now if we want to solve for the length of this hypotenuse and we know a component, what that means is we're going to have to solve for the angle in this right triangle. Well if you look at the geometry of the entire truss here, this angle right here is 45 degrees, which means this angle right in here is also 45 degrees. So setting the opposite side, which has a length of 0.5, equal to the force in AB, I'm just going to call that AB, multiplied by the sine of 45, we solve for AB, and we find that AB is equal to 0.71. And now that we know the total force in AB, we can turn around and solve for the actual force in AD. Remember, the force in AB is down and to the left. Now this pin is not acting horizontally on the truss, which means the only thing that can be fighting the leftward force of beam AB is the force by AD. So solving for the horizontal component of AB, I'm going to call that ABX, we can say that's equal to AD. Well, that's going to be the length of AB, that's 0.71, multiplied by the cosine of this angle in here, again that's 45 degrees, which means the force in AD is 0.5. So having worked out everything right here at joint A, we can now turn our attention up here to joint B. Now if you think about this like you're in math class, where each axis is an equation. In the horizontal axis we have one known and two unknown values, but in the vertical axis we have one known and only one unknown. So what we're going to do is look at joint B right here in the vertical axis to solve for beam BD. So going back to our rules of trusses, if this joint right here isn't going to move vertically, that means the sum of all forces on joint B has to equal zero. Or to put it a different way, however hard AB is pushing up, BD has to be pulling down. So mathematically we can say ABY equals BDY. Now we know the vertical component of AB already, we solve for that over here, it's 0.5. So if 0.5 is equal to BDY, we can say the vertical component of BD downward is 0.5. And again using the geometry of this truss to find this angle right here, which is 56 degrees, we can solve for the force in BD. You see setting 0.5 equal to the force in BD multiplied by the sine of 56, we find BD is equal to 0.6. And so now, having looked at joint B in the y-axis, we know the force in both beams AB and BD. That means looking at B in the horizontal axis, we can now solve for the force in this top beam. 
You see, looking at the free body diagram here, you can see AB is pushing to the right on this joint. And beam BD is also pulling to the right on this joint right here. So mathematically, we can say AB in the x-axis plus BD in the x-axis are acting to the right. Well, that means something has to be acting to the left. Well, the only beam that's left is this beam BC, which must be pushing to the left. So I'm going to say minus BC. Now, BC acts entirely in the horizontal axis, so I'm not going to say this is BCX. I'm just going to call it BC. But realize, these three values add up to zero. But realize, these three values must add up to zero. And knowing the magnitude of BD, we can solve for the horizontal component of BD. It's going to be 0.6 cosine 56. We can set that equal to the force in BC. And we find BC is equal to 0.83. Now, like I said earlier, this truss is symmetric right along its midsection, which means that whatever force is in AB is in CE. And whatever force is in BD is going to be in beam CD. So we've really, are, so we've really already done the calculations for the right side of this truss. Now, typically when I see people work this problem and they get it wrong, or they get it wrong has to do with the direction of AB and BD. You see, if you're not paying attention to whether a beam like AB is pushing on a joint, meaning it's under compression, or a beam like BD is pulling on a joint, meaning it's under tension, you mix up which direction the forces are acting in. And as a result, when you start looking at the total force in the horizontal axis, you end up getting the force in this top beam wrong. So just make sure anytime you're working through a truss that you're real careful about what direction a beam is acting on any given joint. So I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.